Hello, in this video lesson we're going to use Photoshop Elements, Layers, Layer Masks and other techniques to whip up a whirlwind and add a digital deluge to our scene to create an image from a sci-fi blockbuster with these apocalyptic weather effects. So let's kick off by opening our start image which is apocalyptic start 01 and then get the layers palette up and then you can either drag this to here or you can press Control J to duplicate the background layer so we've got a new layer to work on. The next thing to do is to grab the elliptical marquee tool from the tools palette and set a feather value to 60 to give it a nice soft edge and that just helps blend the clouds that we're going to filter with the background clouds. Now we want to draw a circle from the centre of the image so to do so hold the alt key down and you can then click and draw from the centre point and if you hold the shift key down you can also constrain that circle to make it actually perfectly circular instead of elliptical and then you can draw a circle round about that sort of size and you can fine tune it by dragging it around in position. You can also fine tune a selection like this by going to select, transform the selection and you can then stretch it and scale it and position it using this transform option and that won't change the content within the marquee but I'm happy with that so I'm going to just click that um, button there and we're ready now to start filtering our selection. Once you've made your selection let's distort it using a filter. Pop up to filter, go down to distort and we're going to choose polar coordinates. This is quite an unusual filter to use and here's the first effect we're going to use rectangular to polar. You've also got this option here but that doesn't produce the vortex effect that we want so tick this one click here and there's the beginnings of our vortex. And the next thing to do is press Control J to duplicate the content of the selection onto its own transparent layer. I can then just drag these down to show you the three layers that we've got so far. We no longer need layer one so let's click there to hide it and click to make sure we're targeting this top layer. To get a closer look at the seam that we need to remove, Control plus a couple of times to zoom in and then grab the clone stamp tool from the tools palette pop up to the brush preset picker and choose a nice soft round tip of about 100 in size and then click on this layer here alt click to sample adjacent to the seam and then just click and spray to extend some of the pixels over the sharp edge to blend them more subtly you can also alt click at this side as well and just drag these over and spray to get rid of the seam I'm just going to jump forward in time to when I fix the seam and then we'll move on to the next step so you should end up with something like this. Don't worry if the blend isn't perfect as you can see here because what we're going to do is pop up to the layer blending option, go down to lighten and that gets rid of the darker pixels that weren't blending so well but it leaves the lighter ones visible so you get this lovely swirling effect that's blending with the layer below. Let me just turn that off to show you the original, turn it on and I'll show you the beginnings of our vortex. The next step is to target the background layer, go back to the trusty old marquee tool, the elliptical one and then alt click to click from the center and start drawing hold the shift key to constrain it to a circle and create a slightly larger circle that's just overlapping the one you created up here plus some of the background clouds if you want that to be bigger pop up to select go to transform selection and then you can just click and drag with the shift key to make it slightly larger like so drag inside and it's not changing any of the pixels it's just changing the marquee itself when you're happy with that click the tick and there's our new selection you can also of course use the arrow keys to go up and right and just fine tune the position of your new marquee so once you've finished using select transform selection to get the marquee looking very similar to the one we've got here you can then go to filter down to distort again and this time we're going to use twirl so click here and up pops this window and we can then set an adjustment of around about 105 degrees click OK to apply the change and that will twirl the background layer and that helps the background layers content start to swirl in to blend with the vortex on the top layer like so for more drama we're going to change the colors and the tone so press ctrl D to deselect the marquee and then go to a layer new adjustment layer and let's choose levels and click OK there, up pops the adjustments panel, you can click to dock that to the layers palette and move them around together like so and we're going to start darkening the shadows using this slider here, if you drag that to the right, so just below the graph there, around about 60 or so should create much darker looking shadows, we can also change the midtones by dragging this slider around so let's take this to about 0.87 just to darken those midtones in a dramatic way and make sure it's at the top of the layer stack so it affects all of the layers and creates a much more scary looking vortex
Now to change the mood of the shot we can change the colour and to do that we're going to click here to create another adjustment layer. This is just another way of creating them. Go to Hue Saturation. You could also get that from the layer, new adjustment layer option at the top and what we're going to do is tick Colorize and that will change the tones of the mid-tones but the lightest highlights will still stay white so it's not changing the luminance, it's just changing the colours. We can then change the hue to create a moodier blue if you can see some blues up here so around about 214 or so should give us a nice blue colour palette to our shots and mid-tones and that just adds more drama to the scene. Next thing to do is to go to File Open and get this shot here and choose Control A to select all of it, Control C to copy it and if I then Control Tab I can go back to my main document and Control V to add this scene to the shot like so as a new layer. What we're going to do is select and remove the sky so I'm just going to drag these out of the way to make some space for the moment and I'm going to grab this tool here which is the trusty magic wand. Set it to a tolerance of 35 and tick contiguous and the next thing to do is just to click to start making a sky selection. Now we've missed lots of bits so we could either click here to add to the selection or you can hold the shift key down but you can see there's a wee plus icon either way so you can keep on clicking and adding to the selection. Don't forget to get the bits that are inside these rails here. When you're finished modifying the selection, pop up to layer, choose a layer mask and choose hide selection. You can then click on the mask, grab the brush tool and let's just control plus to zoom in a wee bit and you'll see that there's still some areas that need to be hidden from the sky. So make sure you've got a black foreground colour and then just click here, hold shift and click again and that will draw a black stroke from one point to the other, nice straight line and that just helps to hide the unwanted edges of the sky that have been missed from the selection so shift click a few times and then just spray freehand and you can tidy up the selection like so. When you're done editing the layer mask drag this below the two adjustment layers to change its colours and tones. You can then click on the mask for the hue saturation adjustment layer, use the brush tool with a black tip and then just click and spray on the edge of the dome just to reveal some of the colours that are being lit by our vortex so that just adds a bit of variety and colour back into this particular area. Let's just take it up to the top of the dome as well. Left square bracket will scale down our brush tip and create an effect something like that. Now to create the rain we're going to click here to add a new transparent layer at the top and we're going to go to filter, render and clouds and that will give us a bit of texture to work on by blending the black and white foreground to background colours like so. We're then going to go to filter, we're going to go down to noise and we're going to add noise and the value we want is 400 pixels. Click OK, Gaussian and monochromatic is fine and that will give you a nice grainy noise texture to work with. We need to blur that a wee bit so go to filter, blur and choose Gaussian blur and a value of 1.8 pixels will just soften the grain more organically. Pop back up to filter, go to blur again and this time we're going to choose motion blur, set the angle to minus 40, distance to 100, click OK for blacker blacks and whiter whites go to enhance and choose auto levels and then click here to add a layer mask to layer 4. Make sure you've targeted the main layer, Control A to select all, Control C to copy and then if you alt click on the white mask there you can Control V to add the same image to the layer mask. Then if you click back on the main layer, the darker parts of the mask will make the layer's contents transparent but the whiter parts will remain and that gives you your streaky rain effect. It's well over the top so I'll pop up to opacity and take this down to around about 21% or so for some more delicate streaks of rain. And for a finishing touch, let's click here to create a new transparent layer. Let's drag that below the cathedral layer like so, grab the brush tool choose a nice large soft tip of 900 pixels, a white foreground colour and then you can just click and spray to blow out the centre of the vortex and that just helps add a bit of depth to your shot.